to the men, we've talked about this a lot, the, the incels, right? The involuntary celibates, the professionally outraged over alimony and child support payment crowd. Sorry, I'm not on board with you. I understand equality. I understand people being upset with feminists and how far they've reached, but this men's rights crowd that sometimes just goes too far the other way. You know what? You need to learn to be the person that your woman's gonna want when wolves are at the door. Many months later. I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck uh, since 2021. I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. The year is 2024 and apparently I have taken crazy pills or the entire world is taking crazy pills. I do not know what's going on anymore. Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. Red pill communities, uh, guys that talk about this stuff, they've got so many diverse opinions, obviously. And so we're kind of spread across the men's channels with different takes and 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 different thoughts on, on everything. And apparently the speakers for the men's community are Pearl from Just Pearly Things, a woman who's unmarried and never had children, Andrew Tate, a, a man who has done some questionable acts and might be in trouble with the law, and uh, the Daily Wire. These are all the people speaking for men's communities apparently today. So uh, the conservative Daily Wire has come out against red pill men uh, going so far as to saying they're kind of exactly like feminists, they're kind of gay. Uh, I, I don't even know where to start with this one. So I grabbed the video. Uh, I grabbed the video here. I chopped it up a little bit because this was an hour long podcast and I chopped it down into about eight to 10 minutes, something like that. And we're, because they keep saying like, oh, I don't understand. And these men are horrible and they had their views are just as awful as women's. And this is part of my fear. Part of my fear is, and I have nothing against these communities. Okay. So I, I, I'm not degrading these communities that I'm getting ready to talk about. But Pearl is a young single woman who's never been married, never had kids, never been divorced, has questionable relationships in her past. And then she talks about men's issues, but she doesn't have any firsthand knowledge. She's just regurgitating and restating what she's heard and read, I guess, from a lot of other channels. It's fine if she wants to you know, stand up from us, for us from a woman's point of view, but she's not really speaking for men considering the fact that she's not a man. Andrew Tate, I think he says good things about young men and they need to you know, buck up and, and become better and, and grow stronger and, and no one's gonna come and save you and kind of the man's out to get you, which if you look at the news and everything else, they kind of are. Uh, but he's got a questionable past. And then you've got the Daily Wire saying, uh, well, if you, if you don't believe in marriage, you're tearing down the institution. You're no different than a Marxist leftist feminist. And yeah, so I had an opportunity when I, you know, as you know, many of you know, I entered a contest, the contest to win the car at Jeremy's Razor. Now, Jeremy is the most, the bearded mustachioed gentleman right here. Uh, he owns Daily Wire along with Ben Shapiro, or they're the major investors. But anyway, Jeremy Boring has uh, razors, Jeremy's Razors. And we entered a contest to win the car and we won because you guys were so kind to order some of the razors or join Daily Wire's, uh, um, their paid subscription. And I thanked you for that. And I still think what Daily Wire does is important. They've actually sued the government for wanting everybody to have mandatory jabs. They sued the government here in Tennessee or, or, or pushed forward a legislation that stops uh, hospitals from letting young boys turn into girls and girls into boys. They've done some very good conservative things that I think protect our society. But when it comes to relationship, they're out of touch. They're completely out of touch. All these guys have been married for an extended period of time and things really changed back, uh, depending on when you look at it, about 10 years ago, but some will say even more recent than that. I'm gonna jump into the video. I'm gonna refute what they say. And this also, the 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 red pill community is part of the reason why I'm, I'm not considered really red pill anymore because some of them have some really weird takes. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the video. But I think they've just lost touch in general with the court system, men in general, like people in general. It's interesting how the meaning of red pill has evolved over the last 
uh, five years to, to essentially now mean anti, I would say anti-woman. They would say pro-man, but I think it's far beyond pro-man. I think it's decidedly anti-woman in many ways. And you see people who, I think some of them are, are bad actors who are peddling. But then you also see people like, like Pearly Things who, I don't know Pearl. I don't know if she's a bad actor or not. I kind of get the sense that maybe she's just a naive uh, person being kind of dragged along out of half desire to be famous and half probably hasn't read a book. But I do think it's this interesting question that, that uh, is harder to talk about in one-on-one -on -one settings. It might be a fit this format. Just to talk about what is the role of men and women, what is the role of marriage in a society that has essentially turned its back on the concept of marriage that is legally encoded anti-man uh, anti policies and then, and then into our legal code. the definition of marriage. I mean, abolish the definition you know, of marriage. So okay, so before they get into this much deeper... So first of all, we are not – now, some red pill communities, some men, men's communities are anti-woman completely. They, they are. They're, they're, they're usually demonetized and removed from YouTube. They, they don't get to see much of the light of day, uh, but they can speak their minds over on Twitter, and you will see some of them that are anti-woman. However, there are a lot more of them that aren't anti-woman. It's anti-crazy women. It's anti-leftist women that are ruining politics and wanting to do all these strange things to minors, letting them decide who they are at four years old. They're the women it now taking over the churches. They're the women that are protesting everything and shutting down things. Uh, they're the women that are getting into the government, like in Germany, wanting to outlaw a conservative party and not allow any funding to go to the conservative party because they're evil because obviously they're not the left-wing party. There's a lot of things that we can talk about. We can even go so back, and we could even have a debate on the 19th Amendment, because women, uh, the, the and I, I don't have the statistics pulled up on this, but women overall are tax burden on the state, where men overall are a tax contributor to the state. We could get the, in the merits on that. We could get into the merits of how women vote and and make choices based on emotion and not logic or reason. There's a whole lot of things we could get into. But that doesn't mean we're anti-women. As a matter of fact, if I was really, and in many other men's channels or many of you, if we were really anti-woman, we wouldn't care that they were selling themselves on Only Fools. We wouldn't care that they're professionals because then, well, they're available for hire and you could probably sleep with a more attractive woman that you would, than you would ever be able to uh, sleep with if you were just trying to date one. There's, there, we, could, we could probably find a lot of positives out of this stuff. Instead, many of us are saying, look, we've got to stop what is happening in dating and in marriage. And it, because with the divorce statistics and everything else, men are getting destroyed. I don't think saying men are getting destroyed in courts, men are getting cheated on at an, at an alarmingly high rate, Men are getting hurt. Men are getting uh, no opportunity to date. Men are told that they're undateable simply because they're shorter or a little bit, have a little bit more weight or maybe don't have a four or six year degree or whatever. I think there's a lot of pushback on that. And we do that because we actually like women and we want women to change. We want women to come back to reality where most men are presiding. They don't understand that. And what they do see is and again, I'm not saying anything bad about these content creators. They just have a differing opinion of it than, than I do. Doesn't mean they're wrong. Doesn't mean I'm right. But, you know, I've heard fresh from Fresh and Fit. I've heard even pearly things and other content creators from men come out and say, look, a man needs to sleep with 40 and 50 women to really get an understanding of what he wants from his wife. Okay, then where? how do you argue... How can you make that argument and then turn around and say women can't settle down, they'll never find the right guy because their body counts are so high because they've slept with so many men that they're comparing you to every other man they've had and you'll never stand up, you'll lose that battle. Couldn't the same thing be said about men going out and being promiscuous? And look, I, I, have a, I do not have a, a, a clean past, as it were. I, I definitely had my debaucherous days back when I was in the military and a young pup back in the early 90s. Things were way different back then. They really were. And, and what I mean by things were way different is that I, I had a lot more 
accessibility to dating and one night stands and going to the clubs and having relative success with women. Things have changed today. But when I look back on my life, my life back then, was I happier than I am now as a, as a man doing his own thing, chasing his own dream? No, I, I wasn't happier. I was miserable because my life revolved around thinking about women and scoring with women and dating with women and hooking up with women. And was I still popular? What, at what age would I no longer be able to date women? And would I ever get married? Could I find one that's a girlfriend? Everything was woman, woman, woman. When you move on beyond that and you say you have other things to think about and other passions and other hobbies and other things you care about, then you can look at women less as a, a sexual source and more of being a woman. Is she smart? Is she someone I like to talk to? Is it someone I want to spend time with? Is it somebody that I do find sexually and desire, sexual and desirable? All those things start to come more into play because then you're looking at a longer term relationship with that woman than just the quick hookup. And when you start thinking along those terms, that's when you realize women right now have very little to offer. Now, yes, they have the same things they had to offer back in the 90s when I was dating and a whole lot more of them are that way and they offer a whole lot more than they did back then. And so for me, if I was the 20 year old me today, when I was you know, really good shape and I was athletic, I'd probably be relatively successful with women, except now I don't have the height thing. Every, everybody wants six foot tall guys. So, so it's a feast, it's, it's a bonanza for the guys that just wanna go out and treat women like objects because women are kind of saying, hey, treat us like objects. It's the men that are saying, you ladies need to stop and come back to reality. I don't think that comes from a place of hate. I think it, it comes from a place of we love women when they're women and they're doing the right things and they're good and they're not on only fools and they're not doing all these horrible, crazy things. But if we, if we hated them or we didn't really care, we wouldn't be paying attention at all. We'd be talking about something else. I, I think most of us are here hoping that women would change so we could actually have normal, decent relationships with them. It's not anti men they've, they've abolished difference. They've lost right. the difference between men. The distinction itself. Yeah. You know, I, I just went on the Whatever podcast yeah. for my, I, I think it's now my like 28th hour on that, that show. No, the thing with that show that makes it very funny is guys go on and they make fun of these girls who have only fans who are like 18 and don't know anything. And then the guys completely destroy them. And then the girls look like dummies. And then the clip goes viral. And I, I felt it would be wrong to do that. I felt I might get a lot of views, but I might also burn in hell for eternity. And I thought about it for a moment, and then I thought, no, okay, I, I won't do it. What makes him feel that way? That, that is feminism that has crept into our culture. These, the, the only fools women and the crazy ones that are going on the whatever podcast are not good women. They're selling their photos, they're selling their bodies, they're doing crazy things on video for money. I mean, they're basically professionals. And he says, I'd feel bad for making fun of them. That's coming from a, a that's more feminist a man who, who does not think in a feminine way or a feminist way would not say, um, I feel I, I shouldn't go on there. I'll burn in hell for making fun of him. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure as a conservative, a true conservative without the, the feminine left-leaning viewpoint, you'd say, no, they, they should be, they should be shot down. They should be made fun of because what they're doing is a detriment to themselves and society as a whole. But instead he feels like, well, I'm, I, I shouldn't do this. That's that seems to me to be a lot more feminine viewpoint of the situation than what we and many of us in this half of the atmosphere are saying, which is these women need to stop and come back to reality so so they can be happy and they can pair bond and find a good relationship and make an average guy like an everyday guy happy as a good wife. I, I think my view is more conservative than his on this one personally. I, I just felt it's not these girls fault. All of them have some weird family situation. None of that. We live in a culture that teaches them a ton of lies. They don't. They don't. They, they have no education. Even if they went to good schools, they have no education. They don't. So I, I felt okay. Let's just talk about what's really going on here. And they're victims of feminism. And the red pill guys are victims of feminism. And the <coughs> irony about the red pill guys, I sympathize with them a lot. A lot of ways. The family courts are totally stacked against dudes. The culture promotes divorce and abolish the definition of marriage and blah blah blah. But the the red pill guys are feminists. Their, their sense of men and women is 
basically, this, right. it's just that Thank men you. and women are interchangeable. Yes. And go around, screw around, yo, nothing to women. <laughs> if it's good for women, it's good for men. And that's just a lie. With the red... This is the problem that, that when the Daily Wire listens to the wrong content creators that talk about men's issues, they're listening to the loudest, the craziest stuff, and the weird stuff that gets shared out there. It's, it, me, we, I don't think any, I've ever said men and women are interchangeable. I say the opposite. Men have a role in society. Protect, earn, uh, uh, be a provider for the family, to, more the traditional sense. And that women, I don't necessarily say they should be homemakers, but they were a lot happier when they were. They were a lot happier when they were just at home worrying about their kids and, and having mimosas with the neighbor on the back patio in 1960, you know, while the laundry is going. I, I've, I don't know of what men in red pill content say we're interchangeable. Maybe he's talking about the fact that uh, men should be able to go out and sleep with anybody. And if women want to do the same, like who cares? We shouldn't have good relationships or long relationships. We should all just sleep with each other and, and, and then move on. But that's the fast food type dating that I keep telling everybody is a problem with, with the world today, is that everybody's disposable. Use them for what you want to get out of them, which is usually sleeping with them, and then, and then move on to the next one, which is also sleeping with them. It's burning women out. I think it's only satisfying or at least even slightly slightly fun for the top 10 or 15% of men that don't have to do anything except sit around and get all the likes on Tinder and invite the girl over for the 3 a.m. booty call. But for the rest of the 85% men, it's making them miserable. I don't see how that's interchangeable. And so and for to say that we're the feminists, that we're just like feminists, again, wrong message. If I was just like a feminist, I'd be saying women don't have anything to offer society. Women are worthless. Uh, women are only good for one thing, and that's in the bedroom. When, uh, now, maybe there are some content creators that say that, but I don't think most of you view the world that way. I think you can say, hey, yeah, women have a lot of great roles in society. They're not the same as men. Women shouldn't try to replace men's roles because women only want the, the men's roles that are, are in air conditioning at a desk where they get to make big powered decisions for six figures a year. They don't want the other men's jobs. They want to take all the men's jobs that are the desk jobs and push men out. And then when it comes to cleaning a septic line or fixing a, a toilet or running electricity or putting a roof on a house, those are the jobs men can have. Women don't want that. Well, they're more men's, those are more manly jobs than sitting behind a desk on a computer. They don't want those jobs. So it's not that we're saying men and women are interchangeable. It's that women should have a role in society, but the role that they have shouldn't be the man's role because the men have different roles. And by women supplanting men's roles, by women filling all the slots that used to be men's roles, you can see what's happening to society. Governments are spending like there's no tomorrow, bankrupting us. We're making feel-good decisions about borders and about policy and about what's right for kids and all this other stuff without using any sense. They're just using emotions. And it's making everything literally, in some cases, fall apart if you look at what's going on in the airlines. So for him to say, oh, we're just like the feminists, no, no, no. No, we're, we're not saying that men are better at everything and that women are worthless. We're saying men are better at many, many things and women are better at other things and the two shall never meet. But that as women come into men's spaces, they're failing, they're struggling. And, and it's making society as a whole do worse. Red pill, you know, and, and, I've, and I've been in many uh, uh, altercations with, with the red, I've run afoul of the red pill crowd many times talking about these issues. And the question I've always had for them that they've never answered, and I'd love to hear an answer from any of them, is that, you know, because I agree with 95% of their criticisms, uh, uh, as you point out, the family courts and it's how it's stacked against men and so on and so forth. What's the other option? Like, okay, we agree with all that. So then men should just be alone and, and give up on their, on their bloodline and die 
and their bloodline is extinguished? Like, what you are suggesting is despair. You, you are telling men, men are already feeling despair. They're feeling meaninglessness. They're feeling mm -hmm. lost. They're feeling alone. Uh, they're feeling like everything's stacked against them. And so your answer to them is, yeah, well, just that, that's the, be, be in despair and then die. This is, he, he may be correct and that's what men are feeling, but it's also disingenuous and correct it, it, and incorrect. If you look at most of history, the vast majority of men did not reproduce. When you look at, and I, I, I wish I had brought up the article, but I did look into this a little bit and, and it was something like two thirds of women did reproduce, but only, I think it was two out of five men reproduced, which meant, let's say you take four people on an island, uh, Bob, Sally, Sarah, and Joe. Uh, Bob is successful, good-looking, tall, handsome. He's got resources, and he's doing well, and Joe's not doing so great. Both those women would be with the winner, and Joe would get nothing. Because the women looked at the other guy and said, well, he's more attractive, he's athletic, he's got resources. I'd rather be with him than this guy. Or the women would compete. And instead of the women saying, okay, well, one of us will get this one and the other one will get the loser, women will say, hey, you know what? We could both get the winner. He's got enough to take care of both of us and just let Joe rot in a ditch. Who cares? That is a thing that happened. If you go back and look at, for example, uh, and because I was trying to think of examples of this, but think of... Uh, like a dude ranch back in the 80, uh, 1800s, like in the Wild West. Well, you had a farmer and he, or, you know, you could even say a plantation, you know, if we wanted to go a little dark with that. But you had the rich guy. He had his wife. He had servants. He owned everything. And then you, you know, you had ranch hands or, or sometimes unpaid ranch hands. We know what they like to call those um, that did all the work. But, but the ranch hands, you know, they'd go into town and spend a couple of bucks on the local hua of the local ladies, and then they'd go back to the ranch, and they'd live in a bunkhouse with the rest of the guys, or, or in the farmhand house. Those guys weren't reproducing. They weren't having families. They couldn't afford a home of their own or their own farm or their own ranch. The farmer could. He had a wife, and he had daughters. Did those daughters marry the farmhands? No, they went off and married the neighborhood's uh, farmers that had sons. And so the sons of the farmers would, and, and daughters of the other farmers, the landowners, the well-to-do, the rich people, they married each other. They had kids. They inherited the farm or got some startup money from the, from the farmers to start their own farm. What about the ranch hands? They didn't get crap. All those men didn't reproduce. And he acts like, oh, well, if, you know, your bloodline, I'm sorry, that's kind of narcissistic way to think of it. You're, who cares if you're, it's literally just your blood and tissue. Maybe, yes, you could teach your, your children some things and they could carry on your thoughts and ideas, but I guarantee you everything my great-great-grandfather taught my great-grandfather that taught my grandfather, or great blah, 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 uh, to me, none of that's relevant anymore. None of that matters. I probably only got one or two lessons from my grandfather. And so when he says, oh, well, you're just relegated to die, just in despair, let me ask you, uh, who's better well known? Joe Smith, the um, the architect in Ohio that had three children, or Thomas Edison? Edison never married. Orville Wright, half of the Wright brothers, they invented the airplane, the motor operated uh, airplane. He didn't. He was never married. Alexander Graham Bell, you know, telephone. Uh, Tim Lee Berners. Uh, Inventor of the World Wide Web, Web Revolutionizing Communication. George Washington Carver. Carver. Uh, alternate crops to cotton. Development methods to prevent soil depletion. Leonardo da Vinci, artist. Archimedes, Greek mathematician. Albert Einstein, Nikola Tesla, Isaac Newton. Um, uh, Michelangelo, uh, uh, oh, I never heard of his last name. Buonart, Buon, Buonario, gosh, bless it. I can't say Italian names, apparently. Buonarotti. Buonarotti. Uh, very different. I'm, I'm probably butchering that. I'm sorry, my Italian friends. Uh, Renaissance artist. Pythagoras. You know, mathematician. Pythagoras theorem. Blasey Pascal. Um, French mathematician, mathematician and physicist. 
mechanical calculator known as the Pascaline. Antoine uh, Lavoisier, French chemist who uh, considered the father, father of modern chemistry, formulated the law of conservation of math. None of these men are married. James Clark Maxwell, Gottfried Wilhelm, uh, I could go on and on and on. I, I just, there's tons of them. These men changed the world. These men created new science, new mathematics, new theories, new inventions that bettered the world. Most people, not people today, because people today are mouth breathers and stupid, but you ask anybody from my generation, do you know who Alexander Graham Bell is? You say, yeah, the inventor of the telephone. That's where Big Ma Bell uh, or Bell Telephone came from because Bell Telephone was a thing when I was around before. Uh, I, I guess it was various legal cases ripped them apart. So those people are known. What about the guy that just has a bunch of group of friends and he hits the gym and he's in shape and has hobbies and, and maybe he travels the world or learns other languages or have, has has people that are important in his life. Does, does that mean that he's more miserable than the divorced father of two children that had his kids ripped away from him? And now mom is telling the new stepdad that, you know, telling the children that the new stepdad's really their dad because their real dad is a deadbeat. I don't think, see, I don't, I think that's disingenuous to just say, oh, who's going to hold your hand on your deathbed? Like, who's going to, what about your lineage? If that's the best case you have, it's not enough. If you ask most men, is it worth having your bloodline continue carrying on at the cost of your happiness and your money and, and your well-being after your kids are ripped away from you? I, I would say he'd probably say no. See, all these guys at the Daily Wire are married. None of them have had anything negative happen to them. So it's very easy if you have a if you've done very well for yourself in life and everything goes very well, it's very easy to say, "Well, just do what I did." But st it's statistically speaking, and that's where Matt gets it wrong because he says, "Well, just ignore statistics. It doesn't have to happen to you." Well, statistics are there for a reason because it shows mathematically what the odds are that it will happen to you. And right now, it's about fifty-fifty. And what happens if you're in a marriage with the kids and, and you can't leave because you'll lose custody or you can't afford to leave because she'll take your money? Well, you're still technically married, but you might be miserable. It's just such a weak take from, from Matt. And, that's, and you notice I get pushed back and I get argued with all the time in my comments. Do you know who those comments are? They're from men that got cheated on. They're from men that got divorced. They're from men that lost custody of their kids. They're from men that maybe found out they're not the actual biological father of the kid they've been raising. But those are inconvenient. I don't want to hear about those people. Yes, it, okay, it really happened to you, but you chose poorly. That's basically his, his or all of their outtakes to this. And, and I, I think that's very disingenuous. Nobody chooses a bad woman. And my, my point is that, that that's just that's just not an okay answer. That can't be the answer. And, and have lots and lots of sex. Well, but that's that's the sterile. That's, sex. that's what, what you said. Although not as much as a married man. Right. <laughs> exactly. But this is but this is what you were saying is that that's how it turns to the anti woman. Yeah. Because it's not about the despair. The way that you find meaning is then by disparaging the people who have victimized you, right? In, in any victim victimizer sort of narrative, when when there is no actual victim and victimizer and it has to be sort of put together artificially then the, vic the person who self-perceives as the victim is very likely to then strike out at the person who they perceive as the victimizer. And so for a lot of the red pill men who perceive the woman, the great woman, as the victimizer, the idea is that you lash out at women by having lots of sex with random girls and basically treating them like trash. You notice he's only talking about the top men again. L let's break this down. Okay, what he's talking about is lashing out against women. That's very natural for a man that... Uh, has lost his family or has gone through divorce or find out a woman he loved beyond all measure in the world has cheated on him or done something awful. To be angry at that woman and the, the, the principles of dating or marriage and divorce and children, that's only natural. We call it the red pill rage. It's when you're in that, that rage portion of your life where you lash out and you're angry and you're frustrated. And then, and, and, and you, you would, you don't almost wish ill upon women as a whole. 
that's why we have channels like this and others where when guys are ready to let go of that and say, yeah, but without that anger, what am I going to do with my life? I'm empty. I'd like, I want to be angry. I want to be frustrated. I want to, I want to lash out at all of that. Yeah, that's natural. And there's an emptiness when that goes away. And then there's that lonely sadness, which is, it's almost like a stage of grief where you say, okay, I'm, I'm filled and fueled with this anger and now it's gone. What am I going to replace that rage with? I feel empty. I don't trust women enough to go back and date them, although I'd like to. I, I, I'd like a family someday. I'd like somebody to love and trust and be with, but I don't trust them anymore. Now, and is it just me? Am, am I broken as a man? Is there something wrong that I've done? And with communities like this, where hundreds of thousands of men pile into and they say, it's not just you, man. We've all gone through this. We're, we don't all choose. Some of us chose bad women. Some of, it, some of us have done it multiple times. But, but it can't be that my picker is bad all the time if I've made different choices along the way, but it still ends up turning out badly all the time. Now, maybe, maybe we have made bad choices, but the point does remain that you're not alone in that spot, that you can find channels like this or people like this that say, okay, there's a lot of people this is happening to. It's not just me. I mean, maybe there's something wrong with me. I've done something wrong, but it's not just me. There's other people out there that are suffering the same things that I am. So I think it's, he does correctly, again, describe red pill rage and men wanting to lash out, but that's just a step in the process. And then when Ben then when Ben says, and so their answer is just to go out and sleep with a bunch of other women. See, that's when you're talking about the Andrew Tates. That's when you're talking about the fresh and fit. That's when you're talking about these guys that show themselves out there with, you know, a nice designer suit on saying, oh, just be an alpha man and do this. And you can have all these women. And they show themselves, you know, walking through a casino with seven girls on their arms, not realizing half the time that people watching those videos don't understand that that guy actually hired those women for the video shoot so then he can sell you a course that's $300 on how to be an alpha man and pick up women. The truth of the matter is most men, when they come out on the backside of a detrimental relationship, not only do they not want to sleep with women, they don't want to interact with them. And when it comes back around to where they're ready to interact with, with women, many of them might even say, you know what, Ben, you're right. I would love to just go out there and sleep with women and not have an emotional connection to them anymore. There's a problem though. I'm not a 10, top 10 or 15% guy. I'm a, I'm a carpenter from Arkansas and I make 40 grand a year and live on a little acre land with a, with a nice double wide trailer. Okay. For a lot of women, you are not dating material because you're not tall. You're not handsome. You're not this, you know, that. And, and who promotes the message that men need to be all the things? Feminism and the, and the unattainable, un, like the, the unrealistic standards of women today. And who taught them that? Feminism. By you get yours, girl, and you're, you, you go queen and go get your degree and you deserve nothing less. And women have taken that to heart. So to lash out at women by just sleeping with them, only a very, very small percentage of men can do that. So Ben makes the fatal flaw of doing the same thing that most of the women do, which is not seeing the bottom 80, 85% of men is even existing because those men can't lash out and, and go sleep with a bunch of women and get even. Those men don't have that opportunity. Ben fails to see that because he's getting the red pill content from you know Twitter and, and these other places not really looking in the cracks where other content creators that aren't loud and boisterous and paying for advertising to go sell their book on how to be a player, he's not looking to find those men. He's just seeing the big flashing red signs that everybody else sees without digging in a little bit and realizing those flashy ones that are out there trying to make all the noise and be noticed, that more than likely they're grifters that are trying to make money versus really trying to help men. And I'm not saying that about any content creators that I've mentioned previously, but I'm saying those, those type of people exist too. They're all out there. And so to lump all kind of red pill guys content into one, again, is a very big mistake. And it's okay because they said that it's okay with them, but that doesn't, I've never understood the argument that it relieves you of responsibility 
for treating a woman well just because the woman has consented to be treated badly. This, what is the red pill, no marriage thing? I feel like I'm pretty in the... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's a big deal. Am I missing? Like, yeah. I feel like I've totally missed this. Yeah, that's, they, the, that's the whole, their whole position. They, they think that, that what marriage men are, is a... Which men are, what men are anti-marriage? Well, yeah, that's the point. They, they shouldn't be, you know, but it's... No, but they, Candace, Candace is like, what? what's this? I, I've never heard about red pill not getting married. That is literally the whole thing. Not getting married, protecting your assets, not tying your, your, your life to a woman that can drag you through divorce court. That's kind of the whole thing. So here she's heard about red pill. Here she's heard about Pearl from just pearly things saying men don't get married. And then she turns around and said, but do men listen to this? Or, or is just Pearl saying this? Men are the ones that started this. Men are the ones that have talked about this. One of the whole concepts of this is don't get yourself in front of the courts. So she's now talking about red pill and pearly things and with no concept of what we actually talk about and who the men are that talk about this stuff. She's just hearing Pearl because, you know, Pearl's out there making kind of crazy claims and going on TV shows and everything, being boisterous and loud out there. And so she's getting a lot of attention. This is the problem with when women come out and speak for the men's community. Initially, it might be great, but eventually if their message gets messed up or is wrong or is backwards, well, eventually she's the speaker for you and you, you're you going to have a hard time correcting her if she starts going off in a, in a weird direction and you're like, whoa, 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 we men don't think that. She's not speaking for us. Too late. She already speaks for you because now she's popular and sh she gets the attention. And it's a catch-22 because I'm not a guy that likes to go out and interview. I'll do some interviews, but I'm not a guy that likes to go out and interview. I don't want to go on TV. I don't want to go into any of these places where I feel like it's a trap. I want to go somewhere where I can have a legitimate conversation. There's not many places like that anymore. But Pearl has no problems doing it, and so she puts her name out there. And now she is becoming a, a representative of the men's community. As a matter of fact, Candace, even in this longer clip, longer interview, and I trimmed it down a little bit, Candace is like, I should have Pearl on the show. I should interview her. We should talk about it. And I'm like, we've. this is where I'm taking crazy pills. So now a woman that doesn't understand red pill, a woman that doesn't understand the the idea or the kind of the the philosophy philosophy of red pill is going to in, uh, interview a woman who's never lived through any of the red pill or or men's stuff so a woman who doesn't understand what it's about is going to talk to another woman that's never experienced any of it pearl's never gone through a divorce pearl's never lost custody of her kids pearl's never been cheated on as far as i know so two women are now going to discuss what men are, why we're so, crazy town, crazy town. And once again, men are be, being excluded from the conversation. How ironic is that? Yeah, he's right. This is true. All the guys that pop up on our Twitter feed. But tell me, I'm, I'm actually missing debates. this. Well, this I, I, I didn't know the marriage thing. I'm very pro marriage. So, so Pearl, Pearl made that argument. Yes. She okay. Made the so argument men, literally men should, should not, not get, get married. married. Okay. Because the institution. Are, she made the argument. Pearl is parroting. Pearl has never been married. Pearl's never been proposed to. Pearl's never been divorced. That's what I'm saying. She says the right things. I, I'm not hating on Pearl for that. But now somebody that's never experienced this, has never gone through the red pill rage, who's never experienced losing their family or divorce or any of the, or half their money or any of this, a 29-year-old woman who self-admits has never been in a serious long-term relationship, now she's representing what men feel about divorce and marriage and all this other stuff. This is the problem with that stuff. This is why so many of us push back against Pearl because Pearl does want the fame. She wants to be out there. She wants to do interviews on TV. She wants to be well-known, but she's never lived any of it. So how can that be the representative, a 20-something-year-old woman who's never had any of these experiences? Now, she, because she's popular, she's going to be the representative doing interviews about men's issues. Do you see how backwards that is? Do you see how problematic it is? I'm not even saying I should be the one that, that they interview. But at least interview a man that's gone through the bumps and the bruises and the lumps instead of talking to another woman about men's issues. I mean, that is peak hypocrisy. Are men listening to that? Like, are men saying that men shouldn't get married? Or is that a woman saying that a man shouldn't get married? Well, per, it, I think that there are examples of men saying it as well. But I think Pearl is sort of a, a prominent, one of the prominent voices. 
Pearl is the prominent voice that says men shouldn't get married, everybody. Not men, not men that have gone divorced, not men that have lost custody, not men that have been doing content like this for decades in some cases. Those, the prominent one is Pearl, everybody. Pearl's the one prominently saying not to get married. This is when you're so smart you sound stupid because they're smart and they're paying attention to things, but they're only looking at the surface. Like they have a lake size view where all they see is water in front of you for miles, this massive lake, but it's only a quarter of an inch deep. They may know a lot about a lot of different topics, but they don't know anything about this. And the voices they choose to use as examples are Pearl and Andrew Tate. This is the problem with people like that getting in and spreading this message. It's still good that they do it, but this is a problem. A lot of the people- But she's not married. Right. No, no, no. Yeah, okay, so then that, that I think that's first, that's, that's a huge thing, right? I mean, obviously, it's like listening to people that don't have kids tell you why you shouldn't have kids. Like, it, it doesn't really work, right? Because when you're telling them about what changes inside of you when you get married, and I think it's very easy to gravitate towards that. That is a feminist message, not to get married. And if her argument is, if your quarrel is with the courts, I could agree with you. Like, you know, the courts have done tons of things that are awful so, that I disagree. Well, I, I don't even agree necessarily with the courts taking marriage at all. And it was a church thing and they took it. And this is how we ended up with opposed to. Well, I would say um, that a big part of the bread pill thing that we would all probably... So and the, this, is, this is my problem, is now Candace is blowing off Pearl. Therefore, she's blowing off red pill, kind of our thoughts or our beliefs on things. Because she says, oh, so a young woman that's 20-something who's never been married, never had kids and never been divorced or any of that stuff, uh, she's telling people what to do? Well, that's just stupid. Why would anybody listen to her? Well, let's blow off the whole thing. This is what happens when your mouthpiece turns out to be a young woman instead of older guys that have gone through this. And look, I don't care. You got, I, I know we have a billion different opinions on content creators. But if she wanted to speak to Rolo or Kevin Samuels back when he was around or Rich Cooper or uh, uh, um, Aaron Clary or Coach Greg Adams or even you know, some of the, some of the darks, some of the guys that actually do dislike women, any of those would probably be a better represent hammer hand. Another, another one, you know, these would be better examples of who to talk to, because these are men who have lived through the experience. These are men that not only have firsthand knowledge, but they're the ones affected by the laws. They're the ones that are actually hurt by this stuff. Pearl will never get hurt by divorce. Very doubtful because she's a woman, which means she'd probably keep custody, which means she'd probably get the cash and prizes as the way out the door. So she's, she's, she's re, like I said it before, she's just vomiting secondhand opinions on stuff instead of actually saying, guys, don't get married because you, me, we guys will get into trouble. Pearl can't say that because if Pearl really got in, the, in a bad way, she could pull the damsel in distress card, free pass. We don't get that. And, and that's why I think a lot of people blow this stuff off because they say, well, look at, look at the representatives of these communities. They're idiots. You know, they've got questionable morals. They, uh, they're women. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. If opposed to. Well, I would say um, that a big part of the bread pill thing that we would all probably agree with is they diagnose actual problems. Right. So, when Pearl or, or other people in the movement come along and say, this is a major problem in society, right. I almost always agree with them. Yeah. It's when they get to the prescription that I think that, the, that it That's falls right. apart. The prescription being you know, lashing out at women generally or, or well, embracing the, despair or not, yeah, uh, kind no, of nihilism. That's it's a feminist message. I mean, the, you, the, that, that is see, the, the, this is so stupid, and this is where I get so angry at them. I've never, ever, 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 and most other men's content creators have never said, lash out at women yell at women, attack women, disrespect women, put women down. No, no, we've never said that. We've never said lash out at them. We've never said hurt them. We've never said use them as objects. Instead, we say, better your life without a woman. Don't make a woman a central character in your plot development. Chase after a good life that doesn't in include a woman. And here's the great part. If you do that well, if you, if you chase a great life 
and you're successful and you're happy and you have hobbies and you're in a really great place in your life, do you know what'll start happening? Women will start noticing you. Women will start paying attention to you. The way to never get a woman is to chase a woman. The way to get a woman is to chase everything else and women show up. But they're not listening to us. They're listening to the negative influencers that are out there and now they're getting a poisoned pill. Now they look at the red pill as disingenuous or bad or negative or, or apparently to them just like feminists because they think we're sharing the same type of message that feminism is and we're not. We're the antithesis of that. It is a, a fundamentally to be anti-family, I don't understand how you could identify as a conservative at all yep. because everything that the left is trying to do, every Marxist principle, every feminist principle is about disrupting you know, the family unit. It's what connects everything from the climate change lobby to don't, you know, don't have kids, the planet's going to die, to yep. feminism, you know, be like men, we should be like men. It's all a disruption of the family unit. And if you, if you are now arguing in favor of something that's fundamentally Marxist, then you have to examine whether or not you're a conservative at all. It, so, so oh. I, I, have to, I have to be patient because otherwise I will get angry. We aren't anti-family. We aren't anti-women. We aren't anti-marriage. At least most of us aren't. But we're anti-divorce courts. We're anti-feminism. Uh, we're anti-girls going on only fools. We're anti-girls going on social media uh, and, and, and doing debaucherous things for likes. And that we're against the narcissism and the body counts and the sleeping around. We want women to be conservative women. And when I mean conservative, I don't mean like voting conservative. I mean conservative with their lives, not sharing everything on social media, not sharing their bodies with everybody, not putting themselves out there, not being progressive and advanced and doing all these crazy things. If you can fix those things, marriage gets fixed. You fix the divorce courts, you fix the craziness, you fix women being ridiculous with their standards of men, you bring women back down to earth instead of living in some pie-eyed heaven. And I think marriage and divorce and all that will fix itself. But their prescription is, look, everything like 95% of what these guys say is correct, but you still can't not get married because you're breaking down society. Look, you need a roof on your house or else you're going to get wet when it rains and that's not, and you can't keep warm. Well, when your house is on fire, you don't complain about a drip of a leak in your roof. The house is on fire. What they're, what we're saying is, look, the house is on fire, man. You guys are still saying, go ahead and live in the house. Go ahead. Everything will be fine. Just still go in the house. And we're screaming to you, the house is on fire, man. I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to get involved in this thing. I'm not going to throw my life into the huge peril because it's, it's, it's a bad outcome. First, you have to fix the, the craziness in the college and the, the female indoctrination in schools and the single motherhood problem and uh, on and on and on and on and on. And, and movies and commercials making fun of men and poking at us like we're stupid or worthless. And women saying, uh, you know, men need to be all the things. Then when all that's fixed, then maybe men can come back around and reinvestigate marriage. But their answer is all of this is broken, but guys, that doesn't matter. Get married anyway. That's, that's, that's like self-ending right there. That would be what my we're trying pushback to, on that. What we're trying to I, I haven't heard any men say that they're anti so Maybe I need to just... No, I, I have. A lot of, I don't want to yeah, give them press because they're all jerks to me online. Okay. But, the, but there are a handful of these guys. And the, the irony of it is... There's a handful of us, guys. There's only a handful of us. Just a handful of crazy men out there. Hello, all 460-some-odd thousand subscribers. And even more to Andrew Tate and Pearl and all the others. They, they put, put themselves out there to be these big, virile, you know, pinnacles of masculinity. But their anthropology is fundamentally, for lack of a better word, gay, right? Their, their anthropology is fundamentally sterile. And it's, it's saying, yeah, we shouldn't get married. We shouldn't have kids. We should just have sterile uh, relations with <laughs> random women. And, and so it's kind of how the irony 
that, you know, we end up at, at the, the topic that no, no one's allowed to name anymore that Matt made a movie about. And, uh, you know, people say, well, that's so crazy. You know, we should dial that back. But that's just a consequence of the very same sexual revolution that has said for many decades now that men and women are, are exactly the same, which comes from feminism, right? So, Horseshoe theory. We've never said we're the same. See, he's mixing messages. We, I, I know I and many other men in this content sphere have never said, well, just go out and, and sleep with them. Just go out and we're the pinnacle. I, I've never said I'm the pinnacle male. Are you kidding me? 30 pounds overweight, five foot six on a tall day or five seven on a tall day, balding, 50 years old. Am I putting myself out there as the pinnacle of men? Just do this alpha dude bro and you can get late. See, they're listening to only certain voices. But the ones of us that have had the crazy pasts that can say, look, I used to be I used to be one of these guys and it's not worth it. You don't find happiness or fulfillment. You'll just end up being you'll have a lot of sex, yeah, but you'll, you'll also be kind of empty and, and sad and your life still revolves around women if that's the way you think. But but because because we're putting our some men put themselves out as alpha dudes that just want to sleep women with women, that makes them gay. Like, do you understand how at a, at a certain point their theory goes from smart, smarter, back around, I'm so smart, I'm stupid again. Because you're having sex without procreation and you're just doing it recreational with women, you're gay. What? I'm going to play that again, because what? To have sterile uh, relations with <laughs> random women. And so it's kind of how the irony that, you know, we end up at, at the, the topic that no, no one's allowed to name anymore that Matt made a movie about. And, uh, you know, people say, well, that's so crazy. You know, we should dial that back. But that's just a consequence of the very same sexual revolution that has said for many decades now that men and women are, are exactly the same, which comes from feminism, right? So Horseshoe theory. Totally, yeah. I mean, it's... it's uh, this, the logical conclusion of Gloria Steinem is these red pill bros, and they don't even, they don't even realize it. Well, I'm, what, I'm what I, radically pro marriage. What I what I run into a lot. Of, I mean, whether these people identify as red pill or not doesn't doesn't. Really Do you, one more thing that I'll just comment here. Do you notice they're very good at assessing what's going on, and making judgments, and coming to conclusions about things, without actually talking to any men that are involved in this stuff. You know, when I entered the contest for the car and I won, I asked him, because uh, I was talking to the woman that worked over at Jeremy's Razors. I said, hey, uh, at one point they said they're going to interview the winner of the contest. Uh, when can we make that happen? I'd love to sit down with Ben or some of the other guys and have a conversation. Because they knew. The woman said, hey, we saw your, your promo on your videos because we, you know, they were checking out some of the contest leaders. And she said, we think it's really great you're putting together a men's you know, a men's retreat. And I'm saying, yeah, I'm doing it because, you know, men need a place where they can come and get together. And it's still in the works, by the way. I'm still trying to build my house. But I can't have too many irons in the fire, as they say. But the money's tucked aside after paying 56% or whatever it was tax on it. It's still sitting in a bank account. It'll get there. But what was important to me is to say, hey, you know, I'd like to interview one of these guys and talk about why I think it's important to do this stuff for men. And she said, oh, you know, it's the midterm elections are coming up, which was what, 2022. And uh, ben, ben and the other guys are really busy on that stuff. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure we can maybe come back around to it or, or we'll, we'll reach out or I'll talk to them for you. Okay, never heard anything. I'm, again, I'm not saying I'm the pinnacle. I'm not saying that I'm the person they should talk to. But who've they talked to? Well, now they're talking about interviewing Pearl. Why don't you reach out, like the guy that won the contest that you guys threw, the guy that was promoting all this to build a men's retreat, a guy that talks about men's issues all the time. Yep, I make fun of a lot of things, but I'm also not prescribing, and I'm not making this about me. But my point is there are guys like me doing this stuff, just saying, please, we're trying to, we'd like to fix society, not burn it down. And these guys don't care. They just, they make, they, they come up with assumptions. It doesn't matter, but when I talk about marriage on my show and I promote it and I talk about my own experiences with marriage, 
uh, I hear all the time. I mean, the comments are full of people who are conservative who are saying, well, well, that's just your experience. That's a, that's a, you know, you, you know, you, you got lucky, you have it easy. Yes. And, uh, and so, and, and you're trying to trick men into this deal that isn't going to work for them uh, just because you happen to find a good woman. And, and that, and that's the kind of defeatist mentality. I, I hear it all the time, yes. all the time. And, and what I want to say to these men is like, it's, no, it, it's, it's an easy way to dismiss it, but we're all married in this room. We're all happily married. So we didn't get lucky. It's like you, you, just, you have to work at it every single day. It's a, it's, a, it's a choice that you make. And there's a lot of women out there who are looking to make that choice also. And did the so here, I'm, here I've got a soup smash cut to um, Steven Crowder. And there's a reason for that. Matt speaks as if it's a one-way street. Like once you get married, guys, if you work on it, and, and, and it's not something you just throw away. If you find the right woman and you work on it, and you're dedicated to it, it, it's not luck. Just find the right woman. Well, I always use Steven Crowder as an example here because he spoke the same exact way as Matt and all these other conservatives do, which is making fun of incels, making fun of men's groups, making fun of red pill when we say, look, the, ra the laws are messed up and things are messed up and these women aren't worth it. And uh, it's too easy to choose the wrong one. And they say, oh, if you choose the right, wrong one or you, you, if, you, if you make an educated and you, you make sure to do this and you just do this and you just do this. Steven Crowder is now the poster boy for that because he used to speak the exact same way. And then it went south on him. I wonder, I never looked up. I wonder how much he lost. I, I, didn't, I didn't find a dollar amount. Um, but this, this was updated May of last year. The rights move against no-fault divorce is an attack on women. See, Steven Crowder all of a sudden is a proponent um, coming out for uh, no-fault divorce. Gee, what a shock. Why? Because he was going to get railroaded through the courts because he knew he was going to get railroaded through the courts. Now he wants to fix courts. Now he wants to fix divorce courts and how men get railroaded through the courts. He didn't seem to speak like that back in the day. Let's hear from Steven Crowder. The men, we've talked about this a lot, the, the incels, right? The involuntary celibates, the professionally outraged over alimony and child support payment crowd. Sorry, I'm not on board with you. I understand equality. I understand people being upset with feminists and how far they've reached, but this men's rights crowd that sometimes just goes too far the other way. You know what? You need to learn to be the person that your woman's gonna want when wolves are at the door. No one just rolls the dice on the squad leader. And if you're not that man, you need to work on yourself. Because the kind of woman you want, she's not going to want you. So I do get a little bit tired where I see guys passing the buck going, oh no, I'm afraid to date anyone because look, women are crazy. No, no, maybe you need to look at yourself too. Yeah, things can happen. You can be totally in the right and they can Brett Kavanaugh you. Allegedly, for all we, I think, he's, I think he probably did none of it. That's just my opinion at this point. But what about yourself? Are you the man that the woman you would want would choose? I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that it's, it's, it's easy to make these assumptions with the bombardment of news lately, that either all women are crazy or all men are scumbags. And I know that's not true, you know that's not true. But it's time to really start working on showing that. Women, you need to have higher expectations from your men, period, which is not something that feminism has taught. Feminism has let men off the hook, and men, you need to have higher expectations of yourself. This, see, he was on the high horse too. He was, men, you need to have higher expectations for yourself. Women need to hold men to a higher account. Women, oh, you guys are incels and worried about divorce and that you're going to get all... Uh, <laughs> Prominent right-wing commentator Stephen Crowder waves, uh, made waves recently when he announced his divorce from his wife filed in 2021, emphasizing the fact that his ex-wife initiated the process he said, this was not my choice. That is completely permitted. As reported by Rolling Stone and others, the news comes on back of recent proposals by conservative-dominated states, legislators to overturn no-fault divorce in Texas, Nebraska, Louisiana. Uh, the no-fault divorce, meaning that the filing spouse is not required to show wrongdoing by the other spouse as the reason for disillusion. First began in 1969 when then-Governor Ronald Reagan of California signed the first law of its kind in the U.S. today. That is why Reagan, in many ways, is one of the worst presidents we ever had, even though he's a conser conservative hero. 
As these bills seek to roll back a spouse's ability to file for divorce have surfaced, so too has rhetoric about the alleged evils divorce presents to the stability of the American family and women's agency. So, yes, they're pushing back on it. And Stephen Crowder speaks during his protest against Governor Whitmer, blah, blah, blah. See, it's easy to speak from a place of security and putting down everybody else until you have to live through the pain. Let's hear from some Stephen Crowder pain because Stephen Crowder was speaking just like the Daily Wire guys were, except the Daily Wire guys have never lived through the pain of a divorce because they feel they chose the right one. So did Stephen Crowder. I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck uh, since 2021. I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. This was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. But in today's legal... Stephen, did you make yourself the man that she wanted to be with? Did you make yourself a, a man that was proud that your wife wanted to be with? Are you the man that she wants? Are you, you should hold yourself up to higher standards. Your wife, your ex-wife should have held you up to a higher standard and you just failed to live up to it. So I don't want to hear all you guys complain. I don't want to hear you complaining about divorce and uh, child custody and all that stuff. You need to battle yourself. What's that you say? What's that you say, Steve? Oh, did you change your mind on that? Asking for a friend. Legal system, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is permitted. Let's listen to that. Uh, since let's, 2021, I've been living through. Let's listen to that part again. He says a very critical line in there. What has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. This was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for her, Johnny? Your choice and your beliefs and what you want to do doesn't matter in today's legal system. Correct. So no matter how dedicated a man is, a loving, wanting to keep the family unit together, if she wants to go, she can. That's the courts deciding that, not you. If she wants to cheat on you and leave, you pay. If you cheat, you pay. If she just straight up leaves, you pay. If you leave, you pay. And he was a proponent against us. C congratulations. See the red pill? That is a depository, a suppository. That goes right up the backside. It's, I've never seen somebody sitting there with a little, little cognac going, mm -hmm, I've taken the red pill. Let's see what happens. No, no, no. It is slid right up the backside, not lubed, not lubed up, and then kind of usually shoved home with a cactus. Stephen Crowder's learned. Daily Wire hasn't. So they come from a place of, <laughs> we're better than you. You just don't understand. You, you see, you just need, even though all these things are burning down, you should hold up to the sanctity of marriage. I'd love to hear how much Steven Crowder is going to pay to his ex. In Texas, divorce is permitted when one party wants it, period. Um, I loved a woman so much that I married her. A woman who, despite all of this, I still love as the mother of my children. And she wanted something else for her life. That's not my choice. She simply wanted out, and the law says that that's how it works. Now, of course, look, I get it. There are multiple sides to every story, but one thing that is undeniable uh, in this case is that it's no one's fault but my own in that I picked wrong, and that's certainly not the fault of my children. I could go on with this one. He picked wrong. He picked wrong. That's what he says. I picked wrong. But, but Stephen, you guys were together for like a decade. You had two kids together. She stood by your side with your heart surgery and your other issues. What happened? Don't know. I don't know what happened. Now, supposedly Stephen had some moments where he was, you know, he argued at her and told her some things and it was caught on video. But here's the funny thing. Uh, a lot more could have been said. We don't know. 
because I, I got in a disagreement with people because there's a video that, that showed Steven Crowder uh, yelling at his wife and saying certain things to her and, and being somewhat controlling. I, I always preface this. He might have been. He might have been an awful guy. She might have been right to leave. Um, but we don't know. And we do know we saw a leaked video of their security camera that went out and got publicized. Who leaked it? His wife. His wife leaked their argument or their private conversation from a home security camera. She leaked it to the public and to the press. He can't control that. Maybe she selectively edited it. Maybe she, she walked into the room, called him a bunch of horrible things, and then he responded with a bunch of horrible things, and she clipped out the part where she was horrible. We don't know. We never will. But the point stands. She leaked it. So he, he chose the right woman for the first 10 years? Who knows? But this is what happens, see? You're now not in control of the situation. So no matter how good a man you are, no matter how well you think you choose, no matter what you do, it's out of your hands. And that's why we say we're not partaking in marriage because it's out of our hands. It's writing a contract a bit like having a business. I should, I should sit down with Ben and say, Ben, I, I'd like a business arrangement with you. Um, you have Daily Wire. I have my little channel. You're, you're worth God knows how many hundreds of times worth I am. But I would like to go in business for you, and I'll be a content creator on your, your channel, and you just need to pay me, uh, you know, a little bit every year. It'll, it'll help make my, my channel more popular. I'll get more views. I'll have a more influential voice on the world, and maybe I can make more change in the world. And Ben says, that sounds, sounds great. And I say, okay, here's the contract. If you fire me, I get half of Daily Wire. If I quit, I get half a daily wire. If you hire somebody here, here that I don't like and I want them to go and you say no, I get half a daily wire. How, how quick would Ben tell me to stuff it? Like to pound sand? But that's what marriage is. A guy can make as much as the woman. She still can win custody of the kids. She still wins. He can make slightly more. She can, in some cases, still get child support out of the deal maybe even alimony, depending on the state. If he makes 10 times or 100 times what she makes, just like Daily Wire would with, with what I make, maybe even 1,000 times more, is it fair that because I work for you or I'm with you for five years that I should leave and get half a Daily Wire or 10% of Daily Wire plus $100,000 a month for the next however many? No, of course not. But that's the, the con type of contract that marriages are now and divorces are. But they don't understand that. They think we're being unreasonable. It's a coin toss right now with, with divorce. And that, doesn't, that does not ha have the statistics that show how many people are, are in a miserable marriage that are still hanging in there with it. So the, 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 the real question is why that's arising on the right. You understand why that revolutionary movement exists on the left. I mean, Candace spelled it out. It is, it is fundamentally a Marxist movement that, that seeks to destroy the institution of marriage in order to level all of society so that you can build up, based on the ashes, some sort of weird scrap heap of new creation. But, <laughs> the, but, the, but the, the reason that that's happening is because since every institution has now been fundamentally taken over by the left, or at least the, that's the belief of the right, if you extend that to every institution, that, that extends even to like the most important institution. Well, uh, so I want to I want to make I want to make this other point before I move on to this last one of his. We're not trying to tear down to, uh, marriage, dummy. We're not trying to tear down marriage, dummy. We're trying to fix divorce. We're trying to correct divorce. I got married twice. It failed. I got out lucky because I didn't have anything to my name because I was still a relatively young guy who had amassed a fortune or a career that was very good, and I didn't have kids. I'm still pro-marriage. I'm still pro-marriage. If somebody says, I would like to dedicate myself to one woman and her to me for the rest of our lives and have a family and children, and we all grow old together and have the house on the hill, my answer to you is, God bless you, man. Good luck to you. I hope you can. 
But on the backside, when you said, man, I got divorced, you took the custody and the kids and I lost the house and I lost my kids and I lost half my income and I lost my pension, I lost everything. I go, well, there you go. Like that's the divorce point. We're not anti-marriage, we're anti-divorce. We're anti-government getting into your marriage and deciding what you can or can't do as a man. They don't understand that. They just look at men screaming, don't get married, and they assume it's about marriage, when in reality, it's don't get divorced, except we can't control that. We can't control if she wants to get divorced, i.e., see Stephen Crowder. Stephen Crowder said, I didn't want a divorce. I didn't want to lose my kids. I don't want to lose all this money that I've been working so hard for. And she says, don't care. I get to leave. And Texas said, yep. And now Stephen Crowder goes, well, I'm out. And when he says, why is this a conservative? Like, why are conservatives anti-marriage? I don't understand. Here's why. Political gender gap grows as young women move left. Here, back when Ben was kind of married or talking about stuff, right here, men were about a 22% uh, liberal. Women were about 30% liberal. That's about an eight-point gap here in roughly 2012-2013. If Ben's, I think Ben's been married about 10 years. Okay, there was an eight point gap 10 years ago when Ben got married. Now, look at this gap. It's huge, it's growing. It's now 15%, which is twice as much. The men are, st are still right about the same percentage of liberal they've always been. But look what happened since 2012. You zoop, it's gone all the way up. And the reason why it's coming back down now over the last two years, I think, is because so many liberal women went so crazy. A lot of other liberal women went, well, I I'm out. Like, y'all have gone crazy. But if you ask women, even conservative women, do you believe in feminism? Do you believe women should do X? Do you believe women should have the ability to do Y? A lot of them have kind of progressive answers, even though they say they're conservative. So if the women are going way off to the left and the men are still here like, hey, man, we're the same we've always been. When the women, if the women only here, at least here in the United States, if women only voted, 275 would be for the projected for Democrat um, as far as uh, this is 2018. So it's gotten even worse. There'd be 275 projected Democrat districts if only women voted. If only men voted, it'd be 250 projected Republican. So here you can see there's quite, a, quite a, a lot of heavily dense blue areas. And if only men voted. So men, they're 11 points more Republican. They're much more conservative. It's not that men are becoming more conservative. It's, become, it's because women are becoming more liberal, more leftist. And men in response, like myself, who used to say I'm kind of libertarian liberal, which means just like, let your freak flag fly. Everybody do what you want to. Just don't involve me in it and don't make laws that force me to into it. But because everything has gone so crazy now, now I am actually conservative to where you say, hey, should anybody be able to do whatever they want? I say, no, no, you got to put restrictions on things because people are crazy and people are stupid and people are idiots and they will vote and do bad things that will hurt society as a whole. That's me moving right. What forced me to move right? All these women going so far left that I go, well, they're crazy. So if, if the men are still pretty well grounded in reality and the women are off in la-la land, and then Ben says, why is it that conservative men are, are the ones saying not marriage? Because so many women are saying, girl, you deserve better. Girl, get your half. Girl, you, uh, get custody of kids and you can get extra money. Girl, go out and do whatever you want to do. And if he ain't six foot tall and this, 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 then he, he's not a good man for you. That's women doing that. So men are like, well, I, I'm out. This is a bad deal for me. The leftist men, they don't care about marriage because they're in polycube, you know, multi-relationship. The conservative men are the ones that want to get married. The conservative men are the ones that want family. Conservative men are the ones that want conservative women. And then they look around and they said, Jesus, even the conservative women are tearing men through the courts. I'm out. That's why, Ben. Every institution has now been fundamentally taken over by the left, or at least the, that's the belief of the right. 
if you extend that to every institution, that, that extends even to like the most important institutions, right? The right is looking and they're seeing every institution that we once relied upon wrested out of our control, including things like church, right? Th things that, that were very fundamental to our lives wrested out of our control and then militarized against us. And so that's sort of the argument that the red pillars are making. What they're, what they're saying is that the institution of marriage was wrested out of our control and then perverted and used against us in the same way that they're arguing that about the government or arguing that about the church or arguing that about the universities or the press. And the problem is that when it comes to marriage, because it's so personal and because in the end, there is no substitute for it, you can't just despair of the institutions and say build a giant alternative in the way. And like you have to actually do the thing that conservatives really should be doing in nearly all of these, you know, all of these modes, which is seize control of the institutions back. So what the big debate that's happening right now on the right is, can we do that with these institutions or do you burn them to the ground? And it differs institution by institution, right? I think most of us in this room would say like the university system, go ahead and burn it to the ground or the, or the legacy media, go ahead and burn it to the ground. But when it comes to the institution of marriage, you can't burn it down. That's not something you can burn down. Well, it's not an institution invented by man, for one thing. Right. This is their problem. Again, they're, not, they're, they're so smart that they're stupid. Ben says the left have taken over all these institutions and they're ruining them and we should burn them to the ground, including marriage. But you can't do that, so get married. If, if the LDHD TV community and women take over the church and they promote boys becoming girls, girls becoming boys. They promote that, they promote promiscuity, but it's all because Jesus loves you no matter what you do. And that's the church. Ben, you being a very, very Jewish conservative man, would you go and worship at that church and give that church a donation? What's that you say? No, why not? Because the church doesn't have the same values that you do, even though it's a, technically a church. You'd say that, that I do not support this church. So you wouldn't go to that church. No, I don't think that type of church is right for me. Okay. You say universities. Uh, they've, take, they've indoctrinated in university. Okay, would, should I, would you send your kids to a, a university today to get a journalist degree or to get a type of degree that was not very technical? Or even in some cases, doctors and lawyers now, they have you praise the almighty DEI. Would, would you spend $200,000 to send your kids to that university? No, why not? Because it doesn't represent the values and the morals that you have, so burn it to the ground. He even says we should probably burn it to the ground for that. Journalist, same thing. Would you send your kid off to be a journalist and work at Huffington Post or, or the Wall Street Journal? No, because you're surrounded by crazy 98% leftists that don't have the same values. And if your son or daughter wrote an article that they did, that the Washington or the, the uh, Wall Street Journal didn't agree with, they'd be fired. And so journalism's that you're not going to send your kid to be a journalist. No, that's crazy. Why? They don't have the values I want. Okay. So women, no fault divorce. Women can get divorced on a drop of a hat because they want to. Women can cheat and still get divorced. Women can do whatever they want. The left has taken over the, the institution of marriage. Should you, would you send your, your kids off to get in? Oh, definitely, definitely would. That's disingenuous. That's stupid. You wouldn't do it in any other institution, but then you come and say, I'd still t send them off to get married. This is cart before the horse. If you want to burn down journalism and you want to burn it all down when it comes to universities, if you want to burn it all down when it comes to um, whatever, you know, churches or whatever else, if you want all that to go, then what we're saying is you got to burn down divorce. You got to burn down the laws around marriage. You don't have to burn down the sanctity and the love and the family of marriage. You've got to burn down the divorce segment of that. Not literally, I don't go burning down anything. But I mean, you've got to burn down the concepts of divorce court, of how women can get still get the cash and the prizes and all the payouts. And, and multiple times they've said, these guys are right with 95% of their, of their assessment. It's just they're wrong on their prescription. What's wrong with saying we're not going to participate in something that's broken? We're protesting. We're not protesting marriage. That's important, though. We're protesting divorce. And we're, 
we don't get to control when that divorce happens. We don't get to control if she cheats. We don't get to control if she decides to step out or leave or collect cash and prizes and go down and start messing with a guy at the gym that she wants to. And if you want to know where women are when it comes to that stuff, look at social media, look at the news, look at the movies, look at the propaganda against men, men bad, men poison, men awful, bad patriarchy, blah. And so when women grow up with this, women may say, I want a family, I want to get married, I want to have kids. And then when they're with the man and the lust falls out of it and they say, I'm bored. Well, I get to, I can leave and take the kids and take the money and go out and find a new guy because I'm 35 and I'm still relatively good looking. I can just go out and start banging some dude at the gym and, and, and get those butterflies and the tingles and I get his money or part of his money and I get to keep my kids. Oh my gosh, I've won the lottery. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so you, you actually have to- Well, you can to, burn it, but you burn civilization with it. Exactly. And so, the, and so I think that what's happened is a broad category error that the right has made. In being anti-institutionalist broadly, you're starting to see the most right-wing edges of the right wing say, well, that includes all institutions. It includes the institution of divorce, not marriage. I, I would still be married today. Out of my two divorces, okay, the first one, she just left me for, I was very young, 21. She just up and left me. The second one became loveless. She took medication to the point where she was a zombie. The bedroom completely dried out. And I was still a relatively young guy who did want, I, I, I wanted bedroom fun and I wanted it with her. And she said, no or it became a chore to where it was relatively like being with a mannequin. And I asked, do you love me? Do you want this? Do you want to try to work this out? Because I'm becoming unhappy and I'd like to fix it. No therapy, no nothing. Eh, I'm not really that interested in working on it. Ultimately, yes, I had to pack the bags and leave, but she showed no interest in making, doing any work towards, towards the marriage. Could I have stayed in it? Techli technically, yes. It would have been, I mean, I might as well stay in a marriage to a mannequin. So yeah, ultimately I did walk away, but it was because zero effort on my partner. And she just didn't have any interests. I hate partner, my wife, my ex-wife. Partner makes it sound, you know, uh, <laughs> because she had zero interest. And I got out unscathed because I didn't have anything at the time. But I think my first, if my first wife, when I was 21 and she was like 21, if I was... 35 or 40 and she was 21 and everything was the same, I would have lost my shirt. And, it, and she, it would have been her that left, her that cheated, her that dumped everything, her that walked, and I would have lost my shirt. I still like the concept of marriage. I think most guys do. They like the idea of having a woman to love and be with and grow old together and have a family with and the house on the hill. I think a huge majority of men would really like that. The problem is the choice is no longer in our control. The choice isn't ours anymore. And, and we get punished too severely on the backside. And so to call us these names because you, you think we need to procreate and keep our bloodline going and, and to, to jump into something that will sear us to a cinder and say that we're wrong about it, ask Stephen Crowder if he still thinks we're wrong about it. Ask other people that have gone through this stuff. Don't ask 28 or whatever year old Pearl. Don't ask, don't ask, you know, Andrew Tate. Ask the guys that have gone through divorce, that got cheated on, that lost their kids, that lost their family, that lost their income, that lost their homes. Ask them, Did, do you not like marriage? Do you not like loving one woman? Do you not like the idea of just being with one person? Do you just want to go out and sleep with a bunch of people indiscriminately and and, and, and kind of have this casual lifestyle where you're just hooking up. I think most guys would say no. I mean, I'm sure there's a few of them now. They'll say like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'll just rent a woman for the weekend. There's plenty of guys that'll be that way. But all things being equal, I think if you ask most men, would you just like one great woman that you could be with the rest of your life? I think the vast majority of us would say yes. It's until you have to start talking about the penalties. And until you start talking about the penalties, You'll never understand why so many men are not getting married anymore and don't believe the institution. And attacking them like Daily Wire is, is not going to get, garner you any fans or curry you any favors if you're trying to sell your point and, and make men change their minds. 
If you want men to believe in the institution of marriage, you've got to get rid of the sledgehammer hanging over it called divorce and child custody and these laws. Because until, until that changes, say it with me, guys. Uh, let me make sure this is up loud enough. Smart men don't get married. Smart men don't get married. Guys, if you enjoy my work, come over and find me on betterbachelor.locals.com. I do a bunch of live streams, like 10 or 12 live streams a month, only over there for supporters, five bucks a month. Hope you come join us today, and I will see you in the next one.